Welcome in the second video on Lord Tennyson, Alfred Lord Tennyson. Ulysses is a long poem written by Alfred Lord Tennyson. It is prescribed for the BA final year English literature students and it belongs to paper 1 poetry and drama. I am Dr. Vinita Bhadoria, Associate Professor of English in Government College, Bahroud. In the previous video, I have given you a brief introduction about the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson, his life, career, his poetry and other works and his literary movement. In this video, I am going to explain the background and introduction of this poem, Ulysses. Ulysses is a poem written in blank verse by the Victorian poet Alfred Lord Tennyson in 1833. It was published in 1842 in his well-received sound volume of poetry named Poems. It's a popular example of the dramatic monologue. Facing old age, mythical hero, Ulysses describes his discontent and restlessness upon returning to his kingdom, Ithaca, after his far-ranging travels. Despite his reunion with his wife, Penelope, and his son, Telemachus, Ulysses Turns to explore again. Ulysses is the Latinized name of Odysseus, the legendary Greek king of Ithaca, hero of Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey. The poem is mainly about the journey home of Odyssey following the fall of Troy. Tennyson took his classical story and altered it to suit his aims in Ulysses. It was one of the several poems that Tennyson composed in response to the death of his friend Arthur Henry Hallam. Tennyson penned Ulysses after the death of his close Cambridge friend, the poet Arthur Henry Hallam, 1811-1833, with whom Tennyson had a strong emotional bond. The two friends had spent much time discussing poetry and philosophy, writing verse, and traveling in southern France and Pyrenees and Germany. Tennyson considered Hallam destined for greatness, perhaps as a statesman. According to Victorian scholar Linda Hughes, the emotional gulf between the state of his domestic affairs and the loss of his special friendship informs the reading of Ulysses, particularly its treatment of domesticity. At one moment, Ulysses' discontent seems to mirror that of Tennyson, who would have been frustrated with managing the house in such a state of grief, at the next, Ulysses is determined to transcend his age and his environment by traveling again. It may be the Ulysses' determination to defy circumstances attracted Tennyson's to the myth. Tennyson's poem fuses both Homer and Dante, Dante's version of the story in the poem. Ulysses has made it home, Homer's Odyssey, but he wants to go sailing around the world again, as in Dante's Inferno. Tennyson's presentation of the Ulysses myth reflects to some degree of his own desire to get over Helm's death and keep living. It was not enough for Tennyson to achieve a state of ease and tranquility, like Ulysses did when he got back to Ithaca. He also, also wanted to keep living life, taking both its ups and downs in stride in the same way as Ulysses. 
Indeed, Tennyson claimed that the poem described in part his own need of going forward and braving the struggle of life after his friend's death. The main theme of the poem is that there is a search for adventure, experience and meaning which makes life worth living. Tennyson used Ulysses as the old adventure. Adventurer, unwilling to accept the settling of old age, longing for one more quest. Tennyson also wrote this in memory of his friend, Arthur. Arthur Hallam. In Homer's Odyssey, struggles for years to return to Ithaca. In Tennyson poems, however, Ulysses had discovered that home is not enough to make him happy. Paradoxically, his years spent traveling to return home did not make him love that home. It made him love travel and adventure. Ulysses urges his crewmates to join him at last, great voice, so he can reclaim what he considers his true identity. An explorer who is continually striving for more, especially to learn more in this way, Ulysses recognizes that the quest for knowledge is never complete. In spite of this, or perhaps because of this, it is quest for new experience and new knowledge that for Ulysses defines a meaningful life. Ulysses intends to keep searching for newer worlds until he, he dies. The fact that Ulysses will never complete his quest for knowledge also means that he will never again pause and make an end. He will always be on a journey and the, that for him is what defines a meaningful life. Ulysses represents and recommends a life of continuous intellectual aspirations. He, wo he has an avid thirst for life and experience that finds fulfillment primarily in the life of the mind rather than in the life of the senses. His concluding injunction is to strive, to seek, to find, not to taste, to touch, to smell. This is the poem's end. And at the poem's end, what Ulysses articulates, he articulates, articulates what he sees as his true identity. A man determined always to strive to seek to find. Only when you have a goal that can never be fully accomplished can you spend the rest of your life striving for it, seeking new words. And new knowledge is that kind of goal, one that allows Ulysses to be the kind of man he wishes to be. Ulysses is a metaphor for human existence. Perhaps the metaphor of Ulysses is mankind, the way he seeks to live through the underlying of discovery. The idea of death did not scare Ulysses, but only made him more determined to find answers. Ulysses is seeking, is the king of Ithaca, a soldier in the Trojan War. He was left to fight for his life. Now the structure, form and use of literary devices in Ulysses by Tennyson. The poet's language is unelaborated but forceful and it expresses Ulysses' conflicting moods as he searches for continuity between his past and future. There is often a marked contrast between the sentiment of Ulysses' words and the sound that express them. Seventy lines long poem is written in blank verse Presented as a dramatic monologue, 
Some critics consider the poem as soliloquy. The entire poem is spoken by a single character whose identity is revealed by his own words. The ironic interpretation of Ulysses may be the result of modern tendency to consider the narrator of a dramatic monologue as necessarily unreliable. Ulysses moves through four emotional stages that are self-revelatory, not ironic, beginning with his rejection to the barren life to which he has returned in Ithaca. He then fondly recalls his heroic past, recognizes the validity of Telemachus, his son, method of governing and with these thoughts plans another journey. The lines are of the poem are in blank verse or written in an unrhymed iambic pentameter which makes the poem flow more naturally and more effective in delivering a speech. The absence of a rhyme scheme makes the poem more conversational and realistic. The blank verse rhythm throughout Ulysses is remarkably subtle and varied. Ironic meaning produced in the Ulysses because the same lines can be treated as an attempt to demonstrate a character's attitude towards his wife. Irony and ambiguity as well as tone and undecidability can be traced in the poem Ulysses while each of these concepts contributes greatly to the overall understanding an interpretation, interpretation of the piece of literature. To sum up, tone, irony, ambiguity and undecidability, undecidability can be used in poetry and are obviously traced in the Ulysses written by Lord Alfred Tennyson. So the combination of different literary means and devices requires practice and talent to implement the right means in the right situation. Though the poem written by Tennyson is influenced by Homer and Dante, the Greek poets, but with a little difference. Dante paints a picture of himself in discussion with Ulysses over the abuse of power. Finally, we learn that Tennyson's Ulysses never took Dante's route but after he arrived back in Ithaca, was bored, unfulfilled and dissatisfied. So, this is all about the introduction and background of the poem. And uh, I think you understand the theme also, central theme of the poem also, that the need to preserve the and continue Preserve and continuous. Co continuity is the central theme. It was written after his friend's death. Perhaps Tennyson identified himself with Ulysses because Ulysses was as gloomy and as tragic in the mood of sadness as Tennyson after the death of his friend. But Perver uh, Tennyson's poem perhaps gloomy and tragic childhood preservance and optimism is appeared in this poem. So this is all in this video. In the next videos, I'll explain you the poem Ulysses and analyze. Thank you very much.